May the 4th be with you. Yeah. Happy Star Wars Day, everybody. Welcome in to today's Daily Sports Take. I'm Jordan Spurgeon. In case you don't know that, it's my YouTube name. But anyways, may the 4th be with you. I'm excited, as you can tell. I'm very hard to contain it today. But anyways, this is my Daily Sports Takes. We've been recapping the draft. We've already done seven of the eight divisions. If you missed any of those divisions, be sure to check those videos out. And then while you're there, if you haven't subscribed already, please, I'd really love it if you subscribe to the channel. So today we're recapping the final division of the NFL Draft and my thoughts and beliefs on the draft class. We're starting or we're ending it with the NFC West. So we'll start with the division winners last year. The team that was in the Super Bowl representing the NFC, the San Francisco 49ers. Now they only had five draft picks in this draft. They had two first rounders, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. They made some moves, but they still ended up with just those picks. So with their first pick, with the 14th overall pick, after trading down from the 13th to the 14th pick they got from the Colts and then the Bucks, they select defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw out of South Carolina. Now they traded DeForest Buckner to get this pick, so they basically traded DeForest Buckner for Javon Kinlaw. Now I like what Javon Kinlaw can do on the field. I think he was the best defensive tackle in this draft class right there with Derrick Brown who went seventh overall. I think they were really back and forth. Derrick Brown was just a little bit more of a physical menace, but Javon Kinlaw is able to get the job done on the field. Now, it pays off for them because DeForest Buckner was going to become expensive. Javon Kinlaw is now in rookie contract, so they get very similar production on a cheaper contract. So it's going to really help keep this team together just a little bit longer because usually with teams that are young that make the Super Bowl with great defenses like the Seahawks or the Broncos, what happens is the players end up becoming too expensive for the team to hold on and the team breaks up within a couple of years. So the longer they're able to keep this window open by trading away expensive players for younger players of similar value, the better this team is going to be. Now they also did that with the 25th overall pick. They had the 31st overall, they moved up to 25 to go ahead and select Brandon Ayuk, the wide receiver out of ASU. Now the former Sun Devil really came on in his final year with ASU. He was a junior college transfer and he really took some time to develop but this past season he showed that he could be more than just a speedster his route running got better he got better at beating men off the line and I do think immediately he steps in and is a special teams force for the San Francisco 49ers and then he'll eventually become one of the top targets for Jimmy Garoppolo by the end of the next season or two so I really like the pick of Brandon Ayuk there they also get an offensive tackle a tight end and another wide receiver in this draft so very solid draft trying to add some depth and replace some key players for the San Francisco 49ers next up we got the Seattle Seahawks now their draft was all about adding depth last season they made the playoffs they were one of the best teams in football they had to get a wild card because the 49ers were just a little bit better but what happened to them was they lost in the playoffs because they didn't have enough depth to help replace some injured players. So they go ahead and select a linebacker in Jordan Brooks out of Texas Tech in the first round. That's really going to help solidify that defense a little bit. Um, maybe not the smartest pick there at 27. I do believe Patrick Queen was still on the board there, and I think he would have been a better fit for the Seattle Seahawks, and he's the better overall player. But they obviously fell in love with Jordan Brooks. That was their guy, so they went out and got him. Um, they also went ahead and drafted a backup running back, a backup tight end, backup receiver, some extra offensive linemen. So I really like the, the depth draft, um, as I'm going to call it here for the Seattle Seahawks. They really helped develop some depth on this team, which is really needed because they struggled last year once the injuries hit them, especially in the backfield and the wide receiver core. Now we'll turn to the Los Angeles Rams. They were 9-7 last year, but missed the playoffs in the final week of the season. This is another team that, like the 49ers, they're sort of the future version of the Niners team. They were young. They were slowly adding more expensive players, and all of a sudden those expensive players were aging and not producing as well, and so this team has had to blow up. They released a bunch of players this year, including Todd Gurley. They drafted his replacement with their first pick in the second round, Cam Akers, the running back out of Florida State. University. The Seminole is a bell cow back. I don't really know a whole lot about him, but I do understand that he's going to help fill the void a little bit of losing Todd Gurley in his production from a couple years ago. They also select wide receiver Van Jefferson out of Florida. They don't really have too much of a need at receiver, so it was kind of a questionable draft pick there in the second round, but they went with that anyways. And then finally, they add some defensive help with a linebacker and a safety in the third and fourth rounds. So overall, a little bit of a questionable draft for the Rams, but they did get younger with the draft picks they had, so we'll see if they're able to use that to their advantage in the near future and then finally we have the Arizona Cardinals they had one of the best drafts this season because I'm going to consider DeAndre Hopkins who you're not going to see on the screen here a second round pick because they did trade away a second rounder to the Texans in order to get 
DeAndre Hopkins. And then in the first round, the eighth overall pick, maybe the best player in the draft, Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker out of Clemson, fell to them at number eight. They didn't have to move up to get him. They got him at eight, and he's going to be a defensive force for the Arizona Cardinals. Not the greatest defense in the NFL, but he being able to play linebacker, safety, nickel, corner, wherever they need him, is going to make an immediate impact and become a leader on that defense that's going to make a huge change for them. They also get a tackle in Josh Jones out of Houston in the third round, who actually had a first round grade. So getting him with the 72nd overall pick was huge for the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray needs to have an offensive line around him to help support him and keep him upright. So getting Josh Jones to protect Kyler Murray's blind side is really going to help them out down the line. So there you have it. That wraps up all of my NFL draft division by division draft recaps. Let me know what you think of this one though, the NFC West down below in the comment section. And then as always, I'd love it if you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So with that everybody, it's Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you.